Howdy! How's everybody out there in YouTube land today? We're going to be doing a canvas here with a quilt pattern on it that is called the Secret Garden. And this time I'm going to let you actually watch me put the design on the canvas. And you'll see how I do this. Now, what I know is that my main part of the design is going to be four inches by four inches. I know that my canvas is five by seven. All right. So we already know that we're going to have to take some area off of the board. Now, our board measures five inches across. Our design is going to be four inches. If you subtract four from five, you get one. So in order to divide this up, we want one inch border on this side and on this side and that means it's going to have to be a half an inch over here and a half an inch over here because a half an inch and a half an inch equals an inch so we're going to half an inch in from the end right there and a half an inch in from the end right here and we're also going to make those marks down here at the bottom of it so let's square this ruler up here on the edge of the canvas and make a mark here I make a mark here. All right. Now we'll take our pencil right across the straight edge, lining it up on our two little hash marks that we made. There's a half inch mark across there. And we come down here to this one, line up the ruler. Oops. And come right across there like that. Okay. Now where I got off a little bit, I'll take my eraser and just erase those little marks off. All right. Now, we know it's going to be four inches square, so we're going to need four inches here in the middle. Our board is seven inches across. Four from seven is three. Half of three is one and a half. So we know we're going to have to have one and a half inches on this end and one and a half inches on this end. All right. Now I'm going to make those marks down here, an inch and a half in, and an inch and a half in. And the same thing up here. Inch and a half, inch and a half. Then we take our ruler. Make it across there. Take the ruler. Line it up on our little hash marks there. I make a line across there. Now, we've got a four by four square here in the middle. If you don't believe it, take your ruler. Put it on there. Four inches. Turn it this way. Put your ruler in there. From line to line, it's four inches. See how simple that is? Now, we're going to have a design in the middle of this. And what we're going to have to do first is we're going to divide our square in half. And since half of four is two, we're going to put a little hash mark here. And we're going to put a little hash mark here. Put the straight edge on that. And between them two lines there on our border, We will connect that right across there. Now, we want to make another two inch mark going the other direction. It's two inches by two inches. We're going to connect them up between the border lines. Just like that. Now, with this particular one, we're gonna be making a diagonal across here and a diagonal across here. So we have to divide this little box up. And the same thing with this one down here. 
So what we got to do is we got to divide this into four pieces right here. And that means it's going to be four one inch square boxes. Because we got two inches by two inches. So we'll come across here with a line. And then we will make a, another mark, dividing the half going the other direction. Just like that. Take the straight edge and go across like that. Now, so this corner down here, we got to do the same thing too. So we're going to divide it into one inch segments to make four pieces to our little box. So first we divide it in half one way. And then we're going to, whoops, my line didn't go in there. There we go. And then we divide it in half going the other direction. Whoops. Getting tangled up in my headset cord here. There. And down here. And then we line the straight edge up on those lines. And go across. All right. Now. This box, we need a line going from that corner to this corner, and from this corner to this corner, and the same thing down here, corner to corner. So let's get those four lines laid in. Oops. I think I need to sharpen my pencil. Okay, we got that line in. That line's in. That line's in. And the fourth one. That line's in. Okay, then we're going to need diagonals on the two big squares. Go in the opposite direction. So we're going to go from this corner up here, down here. And the same thing here. Okay, just like that. Now my line's kind of fading there, so I'll go back and draw that back in there. Okay, now we got to look at our pattern. We're going to use two colors in our main design here in the middle. For color one, we're going to mark that A. And so for every place that we're going to put color A, we've got to put that in the box. And then color B will go in all the rest of the boxes. And then we'll put whatever color border on it that we want to put on it. Now, you could divide that border up into squares if you wanted to. Um, you could put diagonals in it if you wanted to. Whatever you wanted to do with the border, fine with me. I'm going to just leave these as they are. Uh, probably going to use two colors in the border. The corners will be one color, and the bigger portions of the border will be another color. That's my plan at this point. So with that being said, let's get ourselves organized here and get some paint and some brushes and do our thing get the 
ruler out of the road. One less thing to fool with. Get my desktop straightened up here so I can see what I'm doing now that I got the pattern taken care of. There we go. All ready to rock and roll. We've got our micro brushes, the canvases I get at Michael's uh, when they're on sale. Use your coupon and get you a deal on your canvases. Try not to ever pay full price if you don't have to on your <laughs> craft items. I've got a lot of different colors up here, uh, but I got to kind of decide on what color I want to make this uh, to uh, kind of make it stand out. Now it's called Secret Garden. So that would tell me off the bat that I probably want to use a green color in it. Um, kind of a say this this color here is called lime aid green so i'll probably use that and um say what other colors would you have in your garden um we probably want to use a yellow there's a pretty bright yellow color and maybe some uh pink and blue in there so i would say probably this uh pink parfait would be a good choice and a blue color maybe this um let's see i'd probably go with the caribbean blue kind of looking over my blue colors here but yes i think caribbean would be the, the choice uh so like i say we're going to be using a total of four colors two colors in the main pattern two colors in the the border now you could use just two colors you know in your border you could mix them up there for what you want to put on the border i want to make it a little brighter than that a little more interest so with that being said uh, i think i'm going to start in with my color a and my color a will be well let's see color b is going to be this limeade i know that and next to the limeade i think i want to go with the blue, the Caribbean blue. So color A will be Caribbean blue. So we'll put a little of that out here on the mat. Well, that's it. Roll the lid right through it. <laughs> Have you ever seen anybody as sloppy in your life as I am? <laughs> I couldn't do that again if I tried. Oh, mercy. Yeah, well, like I say, you ain't making a mess. You ain't crafting, so I guess I'm crafting, huh? So, there again, like I've told you before, it's just like coloring. All you got to do is put your outline in. When I put my outline in, I like to try to cover up the pencil marks. Just go right along the pencil marks. Once you get it outlined, painting in the center is easy. Now, you wouldn't have to do it with paint. You don't have paint. You got crayons. You got markers. You can do this with whatever you happen to have. It doesn't have to be on canvas. You can just use a piece of paper if you don't have canvases. Art is whatever you make it to be. Some people just try to make it too difficult. It's not difficult. It's being creative. That's all art is, is being creative with whatever you happen to have. If all you have is a cereal box, use that. You can gesso a cereal box. You use white paint on it, you know, and then you have a surface to work with. Take your ruler and a pencil. Mark you out a design. My granny made all of her quilt patterns out of old cereal boxes or cardboard boxes, whatever from the store. You know, she used up. And she would take that box and she'd take a ruler and a pencil and she'd mark her out a design on it. She'd figure out how much she wanted for seam allowances on her quilt pieces. And then she would draw out that pattern on that box and cut it out with her scissors. 
and she'd mark every piece that she cut out what what pattern it was for and she kept all of her patterns in envelopes so if she needed to do that pattern again she'd know exactly where to go to get it and it was right there in cardboard cardboard was good stiff cardboard you know it wasn't gonna bend up really so she didn't use thin stuff And that way her patterns lasted forever. Sadly, when Granny went to the nursing home, somebody broke in her house and took everything in it. Even the kitchen sink. They took everything. She had a salt and pepper collection that was awesome. Every time somebody went someplace, they'd pick up another set of salt and pepper shakers. I remember some of her daughters said that they didn't like buying her salt and pepper shakers because they didn't know what she already had. And she says, don't worry about it. If you get me something that I've already got, I might be able to trade somebody for something else that they've got that I don't have. So, so you know, don't worry about it. If you see them, you like them, and you think it's something I'd enjoy, go ahead and get it. She just, you know, any any little thing, because she spent all of her time alone, so any little thing that somebody gave her was just precious to her. But she had a great big old china cover. I mean, this thing was huge. It was the kind that had the curved glass doors and stuff to it, you know. And it was full of salt and pepper shakers. And she used to let me play with them. And I don't break them, she'd say. But I knew every salt and pepper shaker pair that she had in that cupboard. <laughs> that was the only thing that she ever collected. That I knew anything of. She lived in that little bungalow house. I used to just think that little house was the berries. But as I got older and started accumulating things, I discovered that, no, that I'd never be able to get along with that little bitty house. I've got way too much stuff for that, and I like my stuff. Oops. Now I'm sticking dead burned fingers in the paint. I'm something else today. Something else. My last video, I was talking about pets and stuff. Granny had a dog as I was growing up named Rove. It was a Border Collie. And he was mixed with something. He had something else in him besides Border Collie because he was too big for a Border. But... Rove was a good old farm dog. Stayed home, never ventured off. I remember one time neighbors come around saying that they wanted to look at Rove's teeth because there's a dog that had gotten neighbor's sheep and they was sure that it was Rove that had done it. And of course, if a dog got in somebody's sheep, it'd have wool caught in its teeth. And uh, Rove didn't have no wool in his teeth, so they had to leave him alone. But I know it wasn't Rove that did it. Cause he never left the farm. That was one thing you could depend on. His rope was going to be there. <laughs> then when Rogue got old and passed on, she got another little dog. She always said he was part collie, and I I was never convinced of that. He was part German Shepherd though. He had some Shepherd in him, and um, she called him Tippy because the tip of his tail was white. 
Tippy the dog. Tippy wasn't as good a dog as Rogue was, but he did stick close to home. And he just wasn't as well mannered or anything as Rove. And she always had some farm cats. She had this one gray, long haired cat that she called Muffin. And Muffin liked to get up in the kitchen window. It was an outside cat. Get up on the outside there in the windowsill on the outside of the house. And she'd get so mad at that cat because he'd get up there in the windows and rub against the windows. And he'd been in Lord knows what outside and rubbing cat fur and cat sweat and mud and whatever was on him all over the window. She says, that cat keeps my windows modeled up all the time. <laughs> but if she was out sitting on the glider swing in the yard doing her quilting or knitting, that cat was in her lap. You knew where you'd find Muffin. And then, like I've said in other videos, she always had a house bird. Very rare that she, I ever knew her not to have a house bird, either a canary or a parakeet. And every parakeet's name was Snooky. She never could teach him to talk, but they'd sing and chirp at her. Okay, so I've got the blue done. Let me wipe that little bit there off the desk. Then I'm going to do the green. Well, get things to cooperate with me just a touch. Color B will be the green. Called lime green. Limeade, to be more precise. And like I said, these are all apple barrel paints easily procured at your local Walmart. Thing I've got paint all over my fingers. <laughs> I've watched other crafters on their show. You know, they'll get some paint on them or some glue or something. Oh, Lord. You, like they wallowed in the hog barn. I'm having a fit. Listen, you'll wash up. You ain't made of sugar. You ain't going to melt and you get wet. <laughs> I did not come from a family of prissy women. My dad used to get so aggravated with the boys that he'd hire to come out and help bale hay or straw or do farm work because they's lazy or prissy or you know didn't want to get dirty or wet or they just get so aggravated with them and if mom wasn't there and dad was aggravated with them boys he'd call me at show them how it's done because i was never afraid of getting a little dirt on me and moving on and mom would come home. She'd catch me out there in the barn working. She'd haul me to the house, make me bath up and put on dress. <laughs> it wasn't that she wanted me to be prissy, but she sure didn't want me out there with the boys doing farm work. See, we, I was raised Pentecostal, which probably amazes most people. I'm not religious. I, I consider myself to be spiritual, but not religious. I don't follow any of the um, common church background kind of things that you would 
consider to be religious. Um, but I was raised Pentecostal and Pentecostals do not believe in girls wearing britches. Girls are always supposed to be in dresses. And so my mother tried to instill that in me that I should always be in a dress. Well, she finally gave up on that when I hit about 15 years old and was splitting over fences. And, well, she, she let me wear these things called culottes. And I don't know if you know what a culotte is. It's like a skirt with legs in it. And she let me wear that being on the farm. But when I go splitting over top of them fences to get to the horse or, you know, whatever I was doing outside, my cattle, because I always had the steers and 4-H and stuff. and I'd climb over the fence and my drawers are showing as I sailed over the fence. She decided that me out there and them boys working on the farm and stuff and my hind end hanging out most of the time was not a real good idea. So I was allowed to start wearing jeans, although they weren't, you know, the designer jeans or the tight britches like you see on the girls today. There's old dungarees that I wore. Remember my stepson when he come to live with us He thought that he should have fancy designer clothes, you know. And I said, no, that's not happening. You'll get what I buy for you because his clothes was expensive enough as it was because I had to get his stuff at the big and tall store. He was six foot six. Big old boy. Wore 14 size shoes. I told him, I said, well, I'd save money. Just get you the boxes. <laughs> Strap them on your feet. <laughs> uh, but I remember one year I needed school clothes and I took him to uh, an outlet store and bought him some clothes. And, oh, he threw a fit. He says, I ain't wearing them. And I said, well, you're going to look funny going naked then, ain't you? And he says, I ain't wearing that stuff. And I said, well, what is it you want? And he started naming off all these fancy clothes, you know. And I said, no, that is not going to happen. And he kept on. I said, I'll tell you something. You keep on. I'm going to take you to the Goodwill and buy your clothes there. Because I could have got stuff cheaper today had I gone to Goodwill rather than going to the outlet store. We'll just really cheap this up for you. And. Oh, he about died. And I said, let me tell you something. We're going to educate you a little bit here. I said, you know, you go and buy you all them fancy designer clothes, pay big dollars for them. And in a month or two, you'll have more out or stained up or ruined in some fashion, tore, whatever. All the buttons will be fall off of them because they don't know how to make that stuff so it lasts. And I said, if you go to the Goodwill store, you've got something that has already been broke in. It's usually of really good quality or it wouldn't even lasted long enough to get to the Goodwill. The buttons has been sewed back on. Anything that's needed patched or pockets needed fixed has done been done. And I would have saved a whole boatload of money. And if you ruin it, I'm not out that much. I said, so you keep on. We're going to the Goodwill. He shut up because he figured out that you know, it wouldn't be a good idea to call my bluff at that point. But, shoot, still to this day, I've been known to go to Goodwill and find some real good deals on clothes or household items. Even craft supplies from time to time. And that road trip that I took to Salina the other day, I spied a Goodwill store right straight across the street there from the UPS store, so they weren't open because I was there so early in the morning, but one of these days, and if I have to go back up to Salina again, I know right where the Goodwill store is.
I wish we had one here in town. We don't. They used to have a used furniture store in town where I got some pretty good deals on some furniture. I needed some bookcases and stuff. But that's gone out of business now, and now it's a it's a used clothing store, which I have not been in. I'll stop in there someday and see what all they got. There's another little store in town where I'm not real sure exactly what all they got in there. I think they have some secondhand clothes, but they've got some old secondhand type furniture, you know, things that they picked up at auctions and stuff that they're reselling. I guess you call it a resale store. And I've not been in that one either. But maybe when my knee gets to feeling better, I'll get out and do a little shopping around, see see what I can find. Maybe I'll do some shows on some bargains. I see a lot of people doing haul shows on what they found when they got out and about. But you see how this is going together here with our little pattern laid in. We just about got the pattern painted. Just wondering what all other kinds of tales that I could tell you about growing up. I didn't partake in any sports or anything. Generally, extracurricular school activities was out of the question because we lived seven miles from the school and I had to catch the bus home because mom and dad both worked and also farmed. So they didn't have time to be chasing after me doing extracurricular after school activities. I remember one time I had to stay after school to work on a project for my home economics class and oh Lord, you'd have thought the world had come to an end because they's gonna have to drop what they's doing to come and get me. I worked on the school paper a little bit because I could do that during uh, my study halls. Get a pass and go to the room where we put out the school paper. I wanted to work on the yearbook committee and Oh, I so desperately wanted to be in a drama club. And I was going to try my very level best to work that out, but push came to shove and mom pulled the plug on it and said, no, that's not going to happen because you'll have to stay after school for the, the practices and we can't be running after you. So I didn't get to be in the drama club. But if I had to give people advice about their kids and raising kids, one of the things that I would tell you is find out what your kids are interested in. And as long as it's not illegal, support it. There was things that I was really interested in that had I been encouraged, that who knows where I would have ended up. Could have been just the thing that I needed to really do my future. I mean, I'm I'm a believer that everything turns out the way it's supposed to in the end. And it would just maybe been a lot easier for me had I been able to follow a path that I really enjoyed instead of working myself to death in a lot of jobs that I could care less about. 
it's always beneficial to enjoy what you do. My dad said for years that if you enjoy what you do, you never work a day in your life. Okay, so I've got the main part of the design done here. Now I may have to go back over it with these colors again uh, after it dries. Because, you know, I see places where it's a little light and putting another coat on there wouldn't hurt anything. But we're going to lay the first coat in. Now I'm going to come around with some yellow. Or, yeah, yeah, yellow. And do the four big portions around the edge with that. I'm going to need a little more than that. There we go. So we'll just start out by laying the outline in there. Right up against that green. Turn this just a little bit, make it a little easier for me. Come right down along this line. Along this line. I'm just kind of spread this out a little bit here. Okay, now I'm going to take my brush and pick up some yellow and I'm going to fill it in. Now we already know we're going to have to come back with another coat of that yellow in here, just like we did on the other one. I'm going to hit this with a heat gun when I get all my paint on it. Go back over it again wherever I need to touch it up. Fill it in. Okay, now, just for giggles, let's see how we do with a brush along there. We can outline that without having to use the micro brush, since I've already got this brush in my hand. This headset cord keeps trying to get in the paint. That yellow looks pretty laid in right next to that green. And we'll put pink in the corners. I was happy to see today that a few of my tulips made it past the squirrels. Doggone squirrels. I can't wait till I get that drone from Rebel. I won Rebel State Sovereign's drone last week. And I'm going to chase squirrels with it when I get it. Dead burn feisty things. I got to clean out my trap it's full of leaves. Get my live trap going again. My knee is not in any shape to be taking squirrels on a road trip right now, but as soon as my knee straightens up, I'm going to get my trap going. Okay. 
bamboo some of them varmints out of town. It's two years ago out here, I caught over 15 squirrels in the summer. The friends are back. Okay, so we got three sections of the yellow done. Here's the fourth one going in. Just come right down along that line with the yellow. Just like that. Okay. So that's the yellow laid in. Now, let's wash the yellow paint and the brush. Get my brush water here. I got this bottle where I use it for washing my brushes out. And then we'll get just a dab of pink to do them four corners. And we'll hit it with the heat gun and I'll see what needs touched up. A little touching. Okay. Keep that up there where you can see it. Let's straighten up the desktop so I can see what's going on here. All these notifications rolling in. All right. But yeah, you can see just I can see there on the camera where there are sections of it there that's not dark enough. So we're gonna fix those as soon as we get it painted here and put the heat gun to it. Pink's another one where I'm going to have to put another coat on. There's a steel mill about a mile here from the house. And at night when it's quiet, I can hear the clanking at the steel mill. Okay, in the last little corner. Just lay the paint right in there. All right, now I'm going to set the brush aside here. I'm going to get my heat gun. Try to keep that off of the paint that I got on the palette. And I'm going to dry that out. Don't take much from that heat gun to dry it. Okay. Less than a minute with the heat gun. Now, since I got the pink on the brush, I'm going to start with the pink and just go in there, put another coat on. Just like that. Get this corner up here. See, it looks so much better once you put that second coat on. And if you don't want to have to do 
second coats of paint, then you might want to just paint the whole board with gesso or white paint ahead of time. And you shouldn't have to put on a second coat of paint if you do that. There, I got the corners done. Now we'll rinse out the brush. Get the pink paint out of it. And we'll do this yellow. And all along this edge needed a little more paint right down through there, so we'll hit that first. And we'll just going to lay in and paint across the design, get up here to the edge. And we'll come over here and grab this piece. Lay a second coat in there. Get this near side here. Turn that and get this side over here. Okay, and that's looking good. All right, now we've got the border painted twice. And I want to come back in with my green and go over this green again. Just talking about me not being prissy. One of the funniest stories that I have to tell you on that was years ago, I was setting up at a swap meet down in Lucasville, Ohio. And this was back in the days before they'd marked off the spots. And you had to go down there on a Friday. And at three o'clock on Friday afternoon, they let everybody in. So we go down there early on Friday morning and set up in the big parking lot waiting for them to open the gates. When the gates opened up, they turned us loose and let us in there, and it was like a free-for-all to try to get a spot. Well, I went in there, opened up the gates there at 3 o'clock. I went in with everybody else, and I found me a spot. looked pretty good, and there was a school bus parked right beside me. And I get out of my vehicle, you know, walk around to the back, open up the tailgate there to get the tent and stuff out, start setting up. Fell jumped out of that school bus and he said, you be sure you stay over there on your side. Don't you be getting over here on me. <laughs> that is a fine how do do. I said, I don't think you have anything to worry about. You stay over there. I'll stay over here. I thought, man, I've got a nice neighbor for a couple days here, don't I? So, <laughs> went on about my business and set up my, my stuff. And as luck would have it, later that day, it went to rain, just about dark. And I was driving a van that had a hatchback on the back of it, you know, one of them raise-up tailgates. 
instead of the doors that swing out on it. Well, I'd set up my tent and I had it so that I could raise that tailgate up right into the tent. And I had all my tables, I had my cages and stuff on my tables and everything looking real nice there and it started raining. Well, wasn't much you could do if it started raining, so I just crawled in the back of the van there. I had my sleeping bag and all and got in the cooler, got me a little bite to eat, and then I stretched out there in the sleeping bag to get me some Z's. And it rained and it rained and it rained. And it's around about three o'clock in the morning. I raised up and looked out the back tailgate window and <clears throat> the top of the tent was starting to take on water. And I knew I had to do something about that because if that top took on too much water, it was going to rip. And I had a broom. I always took a broom along with me to sweep up my area or sweep out the back of the van, you know, whatever might need it. So I eased out. I'm thinking, I don't want to wake everybody up here doing this. I just ease out the back of the van and ease around there to the front of the tent where that place is taking on water and I'll just push up with that broomstick and ease that water out of the top of the tent there and that should be good for another hour or two so that's what I did or at least started to do I eased out the back of the van with the broom in hand and I hit a slick spot where the rain had come off the back of the van and off of the back of the tent there and made like a little mud hole. And down I went in the mud. Kaboom! Every word that you shouldn't say under the sun came rolling out of my mouth. And I didn't do it quietly. I know I had to have woke up everybody in the place, including my nasty little neighbors there in the bus. <laughs> I was covered in mud from head to toe. I had mud in my hair. I had mud in places I didn't know that I had. My clothes was covered in mud, and I'd only taken one change of clothes with me because generally you could make it, you know, put on clean clothes on Friday. You could make it until Saturday night with whatever you wore, and then you change clothes there for Sunday morning to finish doing your sales and pack up and head home. Sunday night, you hit the shower and put on clean clothes again. Well, um, <laughs> I had to put on my clean set of clothes on Friday night. And it still pouring the rain. So by Saturday night, I'm soaking wet with my second set of clothes. My first set of clothes is still muddy and soaking wet. I was not a happy camper. But people that knew me down there, and I was pretty well known, they laughed and laughed over the little fat girl falling in the mud and rolling around in the middle of the night down there at Lakesville. It wasn't that I cared to get mud on I me. Mean, I just didn't want to be down there trying to greet the public covered up in mud. I was a mess. I washed my hair. I had, a, I had taken a jug of water down with me. They had running water on premises you could fill up again, but I always took a jug of water with me in the vehicle because you just never knew what you needed. Thank goodness I had because I had to wash my hair with that jug of water to get the mud out of my hair. I had short hair at the time, thank goodness. I don't know what I'd done if I had all the hair that I got now. I'd have needed a big old scarf or something. Okay, there we got the green laid in. And I got my brush pretty clean here. I think I can go through with this blue and touch up that blue. And then that'll have this piece painted. Hot dog. And I'll have two more of these 
canvases to paint in this series. So I hope you're enjoying watching me paint these little quilt pieces and listening to the stories that I'm telling you about my life and my childhood. Oh, I got a little yellow and a little green in that piece. I should have washed that brush out. Okay, let's try it again here. All right, it's looking better. There's lots of stories to tell me growing up. Jobs that I've held. My goodness, you wouldn't believe some of the jobs I've had. Maybe in my next video, I'll tell you about some of them. I was talking a couple years ago to one of the girls that I went to high school with. And I asked her, I said, well... Did you um, end up doing what you thought you'd be doing when you went to high school? You know, what your vocation would be? She says, yes. She says, I, I wanted to be an accountant, and I've been an accountant ever since. And we've been out of school now 44 years. And I said, wow. I said, I would never have imagined in a million years being in one job for that length of time. I have done so many different kinds of jobs. I've done whatever I needed to do to be able to survive. Okay, so we got that one. Now we got these two little ones up here to paint real quick. Probably not a moment too soon. I hear people trying to message me. So there we go with, with that one, the secret garden, all painted up. Now, I see a place that needs to be touched up, and it would be right here. It needs a little more paint right in there, because I see canvas showing. And there's a little place right here. It needs touched up, maybe a little down here. Just bring it right to the edge of that green. Maybe right there a little bit. Right across here. So I don't like seeing canvas under my painting. Ain't nothing going to be 100%, but you can get it as close as you can. Now, let me look at it again. And it still says that it needs just to touch right down through there. That should be better. Maybe a touch right along there. Get in those corners. And up here, and right in here, and see how that improves it when I get it right there on them lines, cover up the canvas. And right in here, and pay attention to this one. Come right through there, Get a little more paint on the brush. There we go. 
right in through there. Yep, it says it wants just to touch right in there. That's funny because I see it on the camera picture, but I don't see it on the picture itself. Now, there's a place here where it needs just a touch of green right next to that. I'm thinking if I get that painted in, it'll look better on the, on the camera lens. Okay, I'm liking that. That's looking real good to me. So with that piece done, now we've got two more to do. And I guess there's only one thing left for me to say here, and that uh, is to check my Etsy, my Patreon page, my Twitter, my Instagram. Um, Monday nights here on YouTube at 8 o'clock Eastern Time, I do my live stream where I talk to everybody, and we talk about stuff they've done through, over the week and what they've been doing over the week and talk about our channels and support each other and sub up and down and, you know, whatever. You never know what I'm going to talk about on my live stream. So I hope you all tune into that and keep coming back every day and watch all these uh, nice craft shows that I do. And Brenda's crafty. Be like Brenda. Bye, y'all. <laughs>